Lesson 13, day one. So why aren't we using hydrogen fuel? And where does hydrogen come from? Your notes may be checked. Be prepared. What did we learn in the last class? Well, we looked at the structure and function of rocket engines and combustion engines. And we looked at a whole bunch of different articles and videos to learn about the technology of hydrogen fuel cells in passenger vehicles, mostly cars. What did we figure out in our last class? Combustion engines will not work with hydrogen fuel. Using hydrogen in cars requires a special engine called a hydrogen fuel cell. So, if we have the technology to use hydrogen, why don't we use hydrogen fuel cells in automobiles? What ideas can you come up with? What ideas do you have to answer this question? Hydrogen is very flammable, so burning it is dangerous. Maybe gas companies are blocking the use of hydrogen they don't want to share the profit. Maybe hydrogen is just simply too expensive. Maybe the cars, the fuel cell engines, and the fuel itself, the hydrogen, maybe it just all costs too much. It seems like we have a lot of ideas about why we aren't using hydrogen to fuel our automobiles. But what do we really know about hydrogen? So now it's time to add to your notes. Think about what you know about hydrogen. We learned some of this in our Search for Life storyline. And think about sources of hydrogen on Earth. So fill out these two columns. You can work with your table partner. What do you know about hydrogen? And what sources of hydrogen could we find on Earth? Meaning where are we going to get it from? Where are we going to find it? All right, it's time to check the what you know part. Add these ideas from storyline one if you don't already have them. So atoms are unstable. Not in group 18 though, okay? But hydrogen is not in group 18, so it is unstable as an atom. What does that mean? It's trying to fill its valence shell of electrons. And hydrogen actually makes up most matter. I remember it being really common in the universe. But it may be hard to find as an element, like I saw it in a lot of stuff, but not a lot of stuff talked about it as an element. All right, now what about this part? Maybe we could get hydrogen from the atmosphere, maybe from water, maybe from octane. There's a lot of options. Maybe from carbohydrates, we saw those pictures and proteins and DNA and fat. Maybe there's a way to get hydrogen from all of those places. So on the next slide, you're going to see some data about Earth's atmosphere. I want you to complete the notice and the wonder columns. So what do you notice? Use your eyeballs. What do you see in the data? What do you notice? And then what do you wonder? So think about what you notice and what questions do you still have? Do you have an understanding of why that's happening? All right, so here is the data. There is a graphical representation and then a table representation, okay? Uh, take some time, notice with your eyeballs, what do you see, do you see patterns? What do you notice? Okay, so you looked at some data and you're going to look at the notice column. I noticed that there is very little hydrogen in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. And the gases that are heavier seem to be more common in the atmosphere. The lighter ones are less common. Now let's write some information in the wonder column. So you should already have some, but let's add to it. So is there less hydrogen because it's light? Like it doesn't have a lot of mass. So maybe gravity can't hold onto it. So maybe that's why there's less of the light things. Can we mine for hydrogen? Like we can mine for oil and 
um, gold and other minerals can we mine for hydrogen? Well, guess what? We can't really get hydrogen from the air. It's not a lot of it. And, and we can't mine for it. So where do we get hydrogen from? Well, we get hydrogen by breaking it off from other sources. So it's a part of other sources and we break it off and we take the hydrogen. What sources do you think we could use to break hydrogen off? So where could we get hydrogen from? So think about what things hydrogen is a part of. So where might we be able to get it from? So hydrogen is in water. Earth is mostly water. Maybe we could break the hydrogen off of water. So here's what I want you to think. Write down some ideas. You can talk with your table partner. But if we're going to break hydrogen off of water, what other inputs will we need? What other stuff do we need? Well, let's share some ideas. We need to add energy to break the bonds in water. How much energy? Would it be worth it? So like how much energy we're putting in, what are we getting out of it? Is the whole process going to be worth it? To break bonds, remember, we have to add energy in. It's endothermic. So how do you think we should add the energy to water to separate the hydrogen and oxygen? Let's talk about it. Could we light the water on fire to add energy like we did with our flame test? No, water isn't flammable. Okay, next idea. Could we plug water into the wall to use electrical energy? Also no. That's really dangerous. Like people get injured from that. So that's the poor idea. Could we run electricity through water? Well, no. Water does not conduct electricity. Well, pure distilled water doesn't. So how can we make water able to conduct electricity? We have to add salt. The salt dissolves and those moving charges conduct electricity. How can we run electricity through the aqueous solution. Hmm. Well, we can't plug it in. Maybe we could use a battery or something else that's portable. Like this. So what did we learn today? Well, there's not a lot of hydrogen in the atmosphere, but there is a lot of water on Earth. So to get hydrogen, maybe we can separate water and keep the hydrogen part. To separate water, we would have to break bonds. That means we'd have to add energy. And we were just thinking about and talking about different ways we could do this. Where could we have the energy come from in order to break those bonds in water?